Man, here we are again, live on all the places on the internet. I'm Stephen Presley, and this is the 129th episode of the Thunderpop Podcast. It's also our official, official season six premiere. And I'm really pleased to bring you tonight the one and only, the Master Jedi, Master Jedi Matt Wilkins joining me tonight in the Thunderpop Dome. We're going to talk to him in a few minutes. He's, he's over there in the cube next to me and we'll have uh, we're going to tonight we're going to have a thunder take to open the show like we usually do we're going to talk animation domination animation's got to be a big thing right now because it's easy to produce cartoons during a time of social distancing it's easy to do cartoons we're going to talk about the thunder take that we have on that uh, also our main topic tonight is cobra kai and the cobra kai's move to netflix and are the early adapters to Cobra Kai, people that were watching Cobra Kai when it was on YouTube, are we mad that we're having to wait longer for season three while the rest of the world catches up to it? We'll answer that question on this podcast tonight. Uh, what else? Me getting used, still getting used to being on live. Uh, I have to talk into a camera now. It's weird. So weird. As it, John Travolta used to say on Welcome Back, Cotter, and I'm aging myself there by even using that reference. So weird, Mr. Cotter. But anyway, I watched it in the reruns. I didn't watch it in the original run. Um, and we'll have our agree or disagree, thoughts and advice. And this wild man over here in the Cobra Kai cap with me, Matt Wilkins, YouTuber, YouTube sensation from the expanded universe, Matt Wilkins. This is all coming up. And I played this coming up on Thunder Pop. I meant to play that before I started all that. So I'm going to do I'm doing it in reverse. Okay. Uh, let's get into that uh, intro and then I can't wait to get into the show. Yeah. Okay, I lied. Yeah. Uh, welcome to 129th episode of the Thunder Pop Podcast. And it's all about you. It's not about us. It's about you tonight. Always about you. It's also about Matt Wilkins joining me and it's time to get into some episode 129 and how are you doing tonight matt i am excellent thank you so much for having me back on it's always fun to be on the thunder pop yeah I, and it's always fun to have you here with us and uh if those of you that have not seen matt wilkins you're not familiar with master jedi matt wilkins you can find him on youtube he does his own podcast his own show and he has a youtube channel and you can find it at Matt Wilkins, right? Just go into YouTube, type in the bar, Matt Wilkins. Yeah, because I'm so I'm so old. It's back when YouTube didn't have special names. You just put your name on the channel. I was just like, yeah, I was just like starting a Facebook account. Yeah, what? You'd put your name and there you go, off and running, and then you post stuff. It was Been that forever. Simple. Now people are doing, you know, banners and branding and i know man like uh, the, you have a nice intro song i'm like what am i doing i've been on youtube longer i don't have an intro song i need one <laughs> well and some people would say i don't know if that's overboard i i still divert I love it out. It. Like, i well, absolutely I'm, love it i'm glad you, I, yeah, you hadn't have, well you saw that did you you were watching i, I came night. in late to okay. the one yesterday and i do apologize that i don't look as good as your last guest Oh, well, that would be that would be hard to accomplish, but I think I think you're doing a pretty good job. I was like, man, compared to her, like she's the Beatles. I'm the garage band from some high schools, <laughs> uh, you know, not very good there. But OK, I'll, hopefully I can be half as entertaining. I think you're going to do great, but you're already off to a good start because if you notice, he's the Cobra Kai cap that Matt is appropriately wearing for this. Yes this episode tonight because that's what we're going to talk about and i know a bunch of you out there have been watching it now that it's on netflix 
And I've got a bone to pick with you. We're going to, me and Matt might have something to say to you too. But we're going to talk to you in a little bit about that. But let's get into the Thunder Take. And I still don't have a sound effect for the Thunder Take. But since it's October and it's Halloween, we'll just do something scary. The Thunder Take. Okay. What was that? Jeez, I don't know. I just. If the girl from the grudge comes up behind me, I'm screwed. We're yeah. Oh. And I'm and we're all gonna be witnesses to it. So <laughs> that'll I go going in there. that house. What's that? I shouldn't have gone in that house. Yeah. That will certainly absolutely that will certainly go viral though. <laughs> this, I'm trying to get an audience built for this this live stream. <laughs> the last <laughs> live stream with Matt Wilkins. You may actually we may be on to something now. Let's Tell let's, talk. let's talk. We, should, we may have we may have something here. Um, the Thunder Take tonight. I had said when we wrapped up our season five, episode one twenty eight, when I had Johnny Lightfoot on with me, I had said that I thought, and this was back in July, I believe. I had said that I believe because of the pandemic, I call it the damn-demic. Yeah. Instead of the pandemic. Day. Damn, we're still in this damn-demic. <laughs> so. I had said to Johnny back in July, I said, I think that animation is about to, we're about to have an animation explosion on streaming and movie theaters. If they're still around and cable and network TV, I think we're going to see an explosion of animation. It's going to be an animation domination. And because in a world of social distancing and the worry of COVID cartoons are easy to make because people can, make them at home. They can do the voice work, put it on their computer, send it over to the studio. Then they can have someone at another place doing the animation. Yeah. Super easy. So I said, yes, first of all, animation is coming back big time for a couple of years. And then familiarity is still king, which is, yeah. relates to Cobra Kai. <laughs> of course. Exactly. Familiarity is still king. So I think not only is animation, animation coming back, but it's also going to be a lot of the retro we're going to see some retro cartoons come back. And I had proposed that Mike Judge is probably already very busy in talks with people. And then it wasn't maybe a week or two later that it was announced that Beavis and Butthead is being brought back for a, uh, a new third run. Time. <laughs> yeah, for the third time. Because they were brought back, you know, as you know, years ago on, uh, I think, MTV or VH1 did a, did, did a revital. I think MTV brought them back for like one season. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I had a roommate of mine. We used to watch it yeah. back in the day. And when it came back, I said, dude, you've got to come over and we've got to watch. And he came over and I, ha I hadn't hung out with him in like years, but we talked every once in a while, but we, we bonded over uh, Beavis and Butthead. That was our thing. So he came back, we watched all the episodes and I was sad. It was only going to go one season, but yeah. yeah, I was bummed too. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that the the revitalization was not a disappointment. It was very good. Of course, you remember their whole thing. The, my favorite memory of that revitalization, the first revitalization, was when they had that episode where they were doing a parody of Twilight, where Beavis and, and Butthead went out to the woods because they were trying to get bit by a by a wild yeah. animal because they thought it would turn them into a werewolf because they thought, oh, dudes from Twilight get hot chicks. So yeah. we, if we get bit by an animal and become werewolves, we're gonna get all the hot chicks like the guy on on uh, twilight that one and the one where they're in the mall do, doing the massage parlor the oh, yeah. massage thing <laughs> yeah yeah that was a great comeback revival thing it was my judge is a smart guy though he, he can come up with good stories so absolutely he's a great storyteller now this one's gonna be on comedy central this time around i don't know how long this run Next is going to be or how long they're expecting this run to be but this time of course let's take a look i got a photo here of there's Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. Those guys. And these guys. So this time around, these guys are supposed to be a little older. They're gonna. There's, there's the speculation is is that they're going to be parents in this new version. What? So a little bit of Beavis and Butthead doing kind of their version of what Bill and Ted did, where there's going to be a skip ahead of s several years, and this time there's some cha more changes in their life. Apparently that the speculation or the rumor online has been, and I don't know if this has been confirmed, but that they were going to be parents on this new version. Wow. I did not know that. That's kind of wild. And then also the assumption of that is that they would also have wives or girlfriends in this new version. So 
Interesting. So do they change their appearance any if they do that? Just Let's just say, assuming they do that, do they change their appearance or do they still look the same? What do you think? I, I think they change their appearance, but they keep their shirts. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So is that going to be a bit of the comedy? And you saw Bill and Ted face the music, correct? Yes, I did. Yeah. So you know they're older, obviously, now. It's a live mm -hmm. action because they so they couldn't fake that. They are really older. The actors are older. Right. They look great, but they're older. Um, so Beavis and Butthead, much like Bill and Ted, a lot of the comedy could be in there now being kind of a little bit you know older or a lot older. Yeah. Well, I can see Beavis in the car having kids tell him to shut up. I think it would be hilarious. You know, I, there, there, there's some there's some comedy there. I'm interested in that direction. If that's the direction they're going in, that's an interesting direction. I like I like how they're thinking different. You know. Yeah, and I don't know how far they're going to go with that. Like where, how far they take that. I do think it could be funny them having kids. I don't know if the kids are. You know, Bill and Ted had grown daughters. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Be Beavis and Butthead have grown kids, or maybe they. I would imagine their kids would still be kind of like. You know, Bobby on King of the Hill, they're still, you know, going through, you know, uh, school and grade school age. Now, King of the Hill, isn't that kind of a spinoff of Beavis and Butthead, too? Because wasn't Hank Hill an older man in Beavis and Butthead? That's true. And then they moved him to a younger man with a family. I, I always imagine, even though it wasn't official, I don't think, I always imagine King of the Hill is the prequel spinoff. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely... I. I've always considered it kind of a judge verse. Well, that was one of Mike Judge's characters. Yeah. Oh, you got you kids. Oh, you know. Yeah. An older Hank Hill. Yeah. So I yes, the judge verse uh, definitely with <laughs> Beavis and Butthead and and uh, King of the Hill and maybe there'll be some giant Avengers like crossover. That would, Beavis and I Butthead would, and absolutely we need and, that. Uh, that's, that's the crossover uh, that we need, and it should be very good. Face and and King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah oh yeah the crossover no one asked for <laughs> the crossover the, but we desperately will be glad yeah. we got if we ever get it I'm, I'm i'm just begging for it um so yeah so what what is something that maybe also uh i saw that animaniacs they're bringing that back uh already before the pandemic because of the premiere of hbo max bugs bunny was revitalized which by the way they brought back Bugs Bunny. I have not seen the new version of Bugs Bunny. I was a I big fan of Bugs Bunny back in the day. But they had changed it where Elmer Fudd, now instead of having a rifle, because they couldn't have a gun in a cartoon, they changed it to where now he has a machete. Have you seen these photos? No, I'm disappointed. So they've got him running around now with a machete chasing Bugs Bunny, and that's supposed to be less gruesome. Violent? Less violent, less gruesome. I don't. I to me that creeped me out more than him. Because <laughs> a hunter, he's a hunter. So a rifle seems like the natural thing for a hunter to be running around the woods with. Yeah. In any year, in any decade, in it for any generation. But a guy, a dude, a hunter running around with machete in the woods. That's a, he, that's a psychopath. Yeah, he's like Jason Voorhees now. Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't know if that was for publicity to get him more publicity, but surely that I mean that's a major troll job. Who's gonna shoot the beak off of Daffy Duck now? Come on, I mean you don't you don't mess with classics, and exactly. why can't you? Because the thing is though, they still replay those they still replay those old cartoons with him running around a shotgun. Yeah, I guess now in a newer cartoon you couldn't put it in there. Plus, isn't you said this is HBO Max? It's not HBO Max. Come on, get out of here! You're HBO. You can do anything. You can have Elmer Fudd drop the F word. I mean, what? Well, what did HBO <laughs> I do? It, but HBO used to put softcore porn on back in the nineties <laughs> during the middle of the day. I mean, what are they? Why are they all of a sudden worried about a subscription service having a Bugs Bunny cartoon with Elmer Fudd carrying his rifle? I don't. It's just. I mean, it has to be a troll job. It just seems too ridiculous for them to have, for us to take that serious. But honestly, I mean, who's watching the Bugs Bunny cartoon on HBO Max? Yeah. Is it kids of now that are already that already have their own characters that they enjoy now? And would they even be into a Bugs Bunny cartoon? Or that would be for us that the nostalgia as well, adults. Maybe, but I like how 
I like how HBO, when they, ever they start off a new channel, they start thinking about a kid's show. Remember the first mm -hmm. HBO original show was Fraggle Rock. That's true. And, th yeah, and then it that. moved later on to cable. So, I mean, that's nice. I really hope the machete thing is fake. It's probably not. It's probably something they want to do now, but that's kind of stupid. Um, when it, where's Animaniacs coming back? That is exciting. Yeah. No, I just read that today. I don't know who's I, I doing not, it. I did not know that. That was news to me. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if it's been determined. I, th I think it's on a streaming platform. Oh, wow. That'd but be not, awesome. Yeah. I'm not positive where it's landing and it may have something to do with whoever has the, the license or the rights to it. So whatever studio it's under. WB, Warner Brothers still. So could very likely be another HBO Max thing since that's a WB. Oh, possibly so. WB thing. What what animated show would you like to see brought back that hasn't been brought back like lately? There is only one, and that is the Karate Kid animated series. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> even well, though he goes after the magic shrine. There you go. I need to hear that. I need to see how that ended. No. Um, one of the, one of the ones that I really loved as a kid and still love today is the Batman animated series from the '90s. I. Ooh, just yeah. think I, I don't think Kevin Conroy would come back. I, I don't think they he and Mark Hamill are kind of done playing mm -hmm. those characters. But to be honest, that was just a, such a smart show. The DC AU animated universe is so smart and so well done. I, I'm still buying. They, they came out with a new movie, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't as good. It was like, no, 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 no. That was three years ago. They did a Justice League movie that I didn't really like as much. But then they did the uh, Batman Harley Quinn, which I didn't know was DCAU. I buy anything DCAU. Mm -hmm. St uh, Static Shock. What was the spinoff from Batman uh, Batman Beyond? I can't think of it right now. But I even got that one, too. I can't think of the with the DCEU expansion that came out for two years. The, mm -hmm. the Something Project. Someone's going to say yeah. it to me later on. But anyway. Well, if anybody out there knows, um, I know if Johnny Lightfoot's out there on Facebook, he would probably it's, know it's that. Got the Delta, Pro no, the Omega Project, something like that. I can't remember right now. Um, but the thing is, though, I'll, I'll get it all. And I absolutely love it. Now, if they want to continue in the DCAU and do some more stuff, I mean, they always get Kevin Conroy back to do that. I'm interested in watching Batman Return because I want to see more Batman. I just thought that show was just so smart. Yeah. It had an interconnected storyline. It picked up from where it left off. You know, from one episode, if you saw a Mr. Freeze episode, the next Mr. Freeze episode impacts the previous one. And I mean, they changed the that 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 uh, cartoon was groundbreaking because it changed the perspective on Mr. Freeze. No one had done Mr. Freeze like that, portrayed him in the comic books or anything until they did it first. They also created Harley Quinn. People forget that. That's where Harley Quinn, everyone's yeah. favorite Batman villain now, that's where she originated from. So. Who's to say that these guys, Paul Dini and uh, uh, the other ones, couldn't come up with even more stuff if given the chance? Now, it's up to them if they want to do it. But if they did it, oh, absolutely would love to see that cartoon come back. That would be great. And, you know, uh, Mark has said he would be happy to come back and do more Joker, but only only if uh, Kevin does it. Because he said, I'll only oh. do Joker to his Batman. Of so course. That's, that's his thing. Because he's been asked well, about that recently, whether he would do it again. That gives me hope because I'd really – love to see that show return and it would it would that one is a big hit and with hbo mm -hmm. do having the rights to dc and the wb that seems just like a match made in heaven they could really come up with some good stuff i mean i guess it doesn't have to be batman it can be in the batman it, it can be in the dc eu i mean au universe animated mm -hmm. universe and i'd watch it either way but i'd really like to see more batman yeah, anyway, I don't think it's that far out of the question for that to happen because they've already proven now with live-action Batman that they're willing to have these multiple different Batmans going yeah. simultaneously. I mean, there was, we're going to see Michael Keaton's Batman brought back and uh, on a regular basis because he's supposed to do a multi-film with DC, Warner Brothers. Heard about uh, that. In his version of Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne, uh, starting with the Flash movie. And then we've got the Robert Pattinson, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit on, on Agree or Disagree, who's doing that version of Batman. And at least we hope that's still going to happen <laughs> with the way things have been going. But yeah, we assume that Matt Reese will get that movie made. That right. Batman's going on. Um, and there, there's even talk about bringing back uh, some of the other actors that played Batman for the multiverse that they're doing with The Flash. So uh, it could be pretty crowded in that movie, actually, with all the people that are being talked about to come back and do that 
to show up in that film. Um, yeah, it's going to be a multiverse war between DC and uh, DC and Marvel and the Spider-Man movie with Doctor Strange. That's they're they're uh, right now in development with. Right, that's supposed to be a multiverse that's going to be packed full of old Spider-Mans. People like uh, yeah, you know, coming coming back from the old Spider-Man movies. What, what then, was the animated show movie that came out with Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah. Well, that yeah. there. So even with Spider-Man, I mean, obviously because it's kind of under the umbrella of two studios because it's being borrowed right. by Marvel, but it's really over there right. with the other studio. They're doing the animation version, and then they got the live action version. Um, so there's multiple Spider-Mans going on. So yeah, I don't think that that that's too out of the question with the '90s Batman at some point getting some kind of re revitalization. Do you think that this whole CW crisis big crossover they did that got yeah. lots of publicity, do you think that's what kind of started this idea with the Flash movie? Because they saw what kind of buzz that generated. And the what uh, that Flash, that movie Flash showed yeah. up at the end. I yeah. don't watch the shows, but I heard about the cameos and everything. And I, yeah. I did watch the Kevin Conroy mm -hmm. cameo. I watched yeah. the Smallville cameo because I used to watch Smallville back in the day. And that was fun. I think that they already had it in their mind that this could be something that could fix some of the issues they were going through with the, the movies, the DC movies, because you, you were going to lose, supposedly lose bad fleck and then, but they didn't want to have to reboot the whole thing over again. Um, so a way, one way to do it is to in, in, introduce the multiverse and then suddenly we've got a Batman again, but it's a different Batman, but it's still right. the same universe, it's still same stories are continuing but with a different person playing Batman because it's the multiverse. I think they were interested and I think TV was actually the testing ground because it was a lot safer to dip their toes in True. on the TV shows than to risk it all in the movies. And then when they, once they saw, they kind of tested it in the TV world, saw that it worked really well. Then they were like, okay, well we're open for business. We're open for multiverse business. And this proves how much people love continuity. I know we're kind of, tiring out of the franchise film where everything connects. But to be honest, people love that. They feel rewarded for watching things that connect. They feel it's rewarding the re the, the uh, viewers. And yeah. viewers aren't stupid. They like to piece things together. I know there is one fan franchise that recently made fun of people who like continuity and are nitpicky. But that's how fans are. That person does not understand how fans work. And... Fans love seeing that kind of stuff. And that's that's why we're seeing more of that now connected universes yeah. than we have before. And, and, you know, that's, of course, thanks to Marvel when it comes to movies. But, mm -hmm. of course, I mean, expanded universe is what I'm getting on here. Expanded universe connected to everything in Star Wars. Yeah. And that's why there's avid fans. And that you still hear people going, oh, that's a terrible idea. Why, why would you care about continuity? But that's th the same reason people care about those Marvel movies that are interconnected. You know, for people that might not know totally know what we're talking about when we say expanded universe, so Star Wars had a continuing universe. Uh, by the way, I'm talking to the expert in this, so he could explain it to you better than me. Um, I'll let you take it. To kind of. Oh yeah, it, kind of it was all point. interconnected. They connected the 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 uh, movies, Star Wars, and the yeah, the comic books and the novels and the children's novels. If you were reading the children's novels. They knew that they would throw something in there from a previous book or a role playing game. Some of these role playing games were included in the stuff and they made sure to connect everything. And that's why it had such a big, 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 big following. And yet you still hear people at Lucasfilm mocking fans for caring about continuity. There's one fan in particular, one Lucasfilm employee in particular. He just doesn't get it. He doesn't get why people like that. He said, look, continuity doesn't really isn't that, that important. Y'all need to chill out on continuity. I was like, don't tell your fans that they love continuity and don't you love it when stories connect? I mean, isn't that the joy of mm -hmm. it all? And that was one of the reasons, I mean, that's the reason I still love these books better than the movies because they just, there's so many, that's so rewarding to be reading a comp book or children's book or, you know, just a regular novel and going, wow, they connected these two things. Awesome. And it's, it's really fun. So the same thing can be said for movies. There's a big reason why Marvel, me growing up, DC was the one that all the kids loved. All the kids in my neighborhood, we grew up with uh, Super Friends, mm -hmm. and Super Friend, and we were 
DC fanatics. There wasn't a, there was Spider-Man and his amazing friends with like Firestar and Iceman, but no one cared about that as much as they cared about the super fans, at least in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so we all were DC people. Now what happened in the nineties, X-Men, the cartoon came out, Batman came out, you know, and the cartoons influence who people love as a kid. You watch yeah. these cartoons. Very Marvel's true. been really smart with their movies. They've made some great movies. Mm -hmm. They're not my favorite superhero universe, but I do enjoy a lot of their movies. And I'm glad they connect them all. That's really fun. They've done a great job. Only a few like misfires, but I mean, they're probably batting about 95%. I mean, they've had uh, really two, two movies stand out for me in the MCU that were, for me, pretty much duds. But let, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll show you mine if you show me. I can think I got three that I don't like. Okay. Um, so I wasn't quite as harsh uh, for me. And I, I, I felt terrible about it because I really wanted to love this movie so much, especially, I mean, I, I really enjoy the actress. I've seen her work, I've seen her in other things I really enjoyed her in. I liked the idea of the character, the concept. And I like that the backdrop was going to be set in the 90s. That should have been really interesting. A lot more interesting than it was. But for me, uh, Captain Marvel. Terrible. Was was bland. And, and that's the thing. You, you talk about that that movie, the subtitle should be Captain Marvel Missed Opportunities. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it had so much potential. It had yeah. so much potential to be good. And yeah. I mean, at first I got excited. I was like, oh, it's going to be in the 90s. This is great. Mm-hmm. And it was awful. It was awful. It was so terrible. All right. Yeah. What? And they have a chance now. I mean, that, that character is still in its infancy. They have a chance to get it right again. They have, they're going to do another one. So they're going to have a chance to get it right on the next one. Hopefully they fix some of the things that they had issue. There were issues in the first one. Mm. The other one, I mean, obviously is one that everyone forgets about was the standalone Hulk movie that came out before Iron Man one. Uh, that would have been that was supposed to, supposed to have been connected to that universe, but a lot of people don't. That was the know. Ang Lee one. No, uh, no, 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 or the Ed Norton. Ed Norton, because there was two. The Ed, one was, Ed, yeah, yeah. The Ang Lee one, I agree with you. Um, the Ed Norton one, I actually enjoyed, and yeah. that was supposed to be Ed Norton was supposed to be part of the Avengers. That was the plan. It was that that was going to be. So a lot of people, when they think, oh, the the. The whole universe started off with Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man, but no, it actually started with Ed Norton's Hulk. It's just since they recasted Ed Norton with uh, Mark Ruffalo, a lot Ed of people Norton. forget the Ed Norton Hulk was part of that universe. It's part, yeah, it's part of that MCU. Yeah. Um, by my, the way, by the way, there's also there's been rumors even about Ed Norton coming back in a multiverse scenario for Marvel. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take yep. it. My, my my two, and these are very unpopular, my other two. I mean, meaning uh, everyone really loved them, and I just didn't. Uh, Doctor Strange w was wow. not. Well, wow. I know. That's a very popular one with fans. Yeah. A lot of fans loved it. and I loved it, uh, too. Yeah. I was just not a fan. And the other one, and I have a reason for this on why. And I asked my brother just to make sure I wasn't being overcritically harsh. And I hate to say this one. But um, I was told Black Panther was the next Avengers movie. And I was so excited to see this movie. And have you looked at the special effects and the CGI and the obvious blue screen? The movie looks bad. The actors do a great job. And the story's probably there, too. But there is some bad CGI. There is some horrible blue screen. It's almost like we're watching a... Like, this came out in 2005 or something? Mm -hmm. It uh, just... I don't think it was that I, far. No, I, I, no, no, I know, but it looks like it did. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Back when we were making these... Back okay. when, you know, you could tell it was an obvious blue screen. There are some scenes, it is bad. And then the fight with uh, Kilgore, that CGI looks horrible. It looks 2005, early 2000 oh. horrible. I'll have to go back and watch it. Yeah, I have to. And, and the thing was, I... I wanted to like this because everyone said it was great and i was like but it looks terrible and i felt bad and i feel bad for the actor i i, I, I you know when he passed away that's sad because yeah he had a lot of potential you know when when they in introduced him in uh avengers i was interested i was like yeah give this guy his own movie mm -hmm. and and then i watched i was like oh oh but but please put <laughs> put a different director 
Why would they let that? I can't believe. And the thing is, though, I am. I guess I'm the only one. But I talked to my brother just to make sure I wasn't being too critical. He's like, oh, yeah, that was a horrible looking film. I said, OK, thank you. <laughs> that was uh, that was the Creed director. For was Creed. it? Yeah. Creed one. Rocky's Creed. Oh, well, that explains it. I didn't like I, I like Creed, but Creed could be done so much better. I like and I have both Creed movies in my yeah. collection. But yeah. Creed, even both those Creed movies could have been done so much better. So especially the second one, it's so choppy. Mm -hmm. It seems like they just took a great scene and then put it with filler and then another good scene. And then we have to have filler. It's like that guy was trying to get some filler and make his movie. Now you There's actually a, liked and you're a huge Rocky fan. I love you actually, Rocky. You actually like Creed two more than Creed one. Is that correct? I, no, I, I, I do like Creed one for, better but I, creed 2 has some solid I'm, i'll be honest some of rocky's best scenes are in creed to be hit in creed one his speech about you know all my you know all your you live in the future all my friends are in the past meaning they're gone that's a great speech i absolutely love it and then in two when draco comes back and they they meet in the restaurant yeah that's great and there's so much tension yeah. between the two that was an epic moment they almost shouldn't have put it. And the thing is, you know, tip my cap to Sylvester Stallone. He could have walked away and eventually made those Rocky movies. You know, Rocky starring Creed. He didn't. Yeah. He backed He backed away his character. He said, no, I'm going to be a small presence in this movie. And he was. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, whenever he and he can't help it. Whenever he's on there, he steals the scene. He's so he's gotten Rocky down pat. And he's a great character. Uh Oh goodness, Dolph Lundgren is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you just have gold there. And unfortunately, all of their scenes outshone the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's it, because you really, I mean, what's Creed dealing with? Being a dad and then going through the same issues that his other dad came, that he needs to be a good dad and everything. And like I said, that's a great story to have, but we need to care about Creed. We don't, as Rocky fans or my my fans, we're we're interested in Draco coming back and all this tension going on. And yeah, that should, like I said, the, on paper, it looks like a good storyline, but it was just, it's awful when one person, and, and it wasn't Sly Stallone's fault. I just think there's just two excellent actors who do some powerful scenes and it made you wish when, when is Rocky coming back on the screen? That's all what I was doing during Creed two. Well, I will say this. I, I think I, I, I slightly agree, disagree with you and, I, and, and still yet agree with you on a part of that. Sure. Um, first Creed, I thought it was a pretty even, evenly balanced. I agree with that. First Sloan Creed, yes. In between uh, Sloan and Michael, Michael B. Jordan, and, yes. and I was compelled with both characters. Um, and I think they were both were fifty fifty in that film. Me the too second, on the first one. I agree with that. The second one, I will agree that the stuff with there wasn't a lot of interesting stuff for Michael B. Jordan in part two, and I felt like it was the, the most of the stuff I was compelled with in part two was that reconnection between Drago. And Rocky and that longtime rivalry. And the, and, the, and, and the thing is, it's a great story it. plot for Creed because he is finally going to get his revenge mm -hmm. for his father's. So this should be should have been a big moment for Creed. But for some reason, it just wasn't coming across that we cared. And I was like, this is it's weird because how do you fix that? I have no idea because the plot is really good. It's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, um, before we're going to jump into Cobra Kai here in a second, but this is a good segue because Rocky, you know, of course, from the same founders of Cobra of the original Karate Kid. So Stallone during the quarantine and lockdown and, and the pandemic was under the hood of the car working on a director's cut of Rocky Four that's going to be released in the future. He's, he's doing a director's cut, which is going to have additional footage. I guess it's going to be a longer, like maybe like a four hour cut, but it's going to have uh, stuff that was cut up for the original. But there's one of the one thing from the original Rocky four that's being taken out. That's not going to be back. And that is Polly's robot, which got no! a lot of controversy on the internet about them taking out Polly's robot. And they actually went, the company that made that robot, they yeah. went to the founder of that company. Someone found him, found the founder. Someone found the founder uh, online, and they asked him about that. And apparently he said, you know, I get it. I think what Stallone is doing there is on purpose. 
because he knows that's going to get a lot of people stirred up on the internet and it's going to draw a lot of attention to his re-release of Rocky four. So he thinks more for press. And see, I was saying they better have more of that robot. More. Oh, that's funny. I was, I was I was about to say that. I want to see more of the '80s robot. That see, movie is bleeding '80s, folks, and it is. Yeah. That's one of the reason it is a phenomenal movie. It's a phenomenal movie. That was my fear when I started to digest that a little bit about the idea of them doing a new cut of Rocky IV. Was I was worried. It, you're right. Is the most '80s of all the Rockies, mm -hmm. even more '80s than Rocky IV because it's just. Explosions yeah. of '80s all over that film. The, the from the from the training montage um, to the 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 scene where he gets in the car and takes off, and there's that very Miami Vice scene with him driving and speeding around in his car, and they're playing the, the 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 music. It's very '80s, but I'm worried about them toning that down too much. I hope not, because that's what made the movie lovable. Drago punches a bag, and a computer tells him how hard he hit it. Meanwhile, Rocky's Rocky's in the snow punching a tree. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's I mean, it's it's cheesy, but it's perfect for but the it's time. The, it's the charm of that movie. It's such, and I'll, I'll be honest, they recently replayed each one of the Rockies, mm -hmm. one through I think four. Maybe they played five yeah. in theaters, and I missed it because I couldn't get to the theater every night to see it. But I totally regret that because I think even five I have forgiven. When I first saw it, I thought it was awful. I've watched it again, and it's not a bad movie. You know, it would make it into my, you know, Rocky watch party. If I'm going to do a Rocky marathon watch party, which I would love to do sometime soon in the near future, uh, maybe over the winter, uh, I would I would still include that in my watch party. Rocky. Oh, Friday. yeah, it, it, it's definitely much better. I think we were just used to having Rocky in the ring, and that was the first time they took him out. And it's, the, to, to be honest, that was a smart move by Sly Stallone mm -hmm. to change. He goes, guys, it's always the same ending. It's always the same. Let's do something different. And then people hated it because me, idiots like me, were like, oh, wasn't, that wasn't Rocky in the ring anymore. He's not too old. He's never too old. Yeah, he was too old in the first movie. You guys forgot. They just keep yeah. coming back. He always is too old. But uh, this, I mean, but that story works. I mean, you look at Balboa. That's probably a controversial opinion here, but I like it better than Rocky. And it's the same type story. He's over the hill, but then he comes back and has mm -hmm. one more match. And it's just great. Mm -hmm. It's just great. But Rocky five was a bold choice. I have new appreciation for it. And I really do enjoy that film now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things that the, it's like wine. It aged better than we thought it would for sure. It definitely did. Uh, now Cobra Kai, another thing that aged very well was this karate kid universe. Yeah. And it aged so well. It's, Almost as, as if not as big, it may be bigger than it was the first time around with the original movies. So it's back in a big way. And but it's been back for a while because it premiered on YouTube, originally YouTube Red. Yep. But then it was changed to YouTube Premium because YouTube Red, let's face it, that sounded like the name of a porn site. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> awkward. I'm gonna go uh, put stuff on YouTube Red. It's like what? <laughs> So they, they rebranded to YouTube Premium. That was better. YouTube was going to be the next big thing in original content. They were going to compete with Netflix. They were going to take Amazon Prime out thing. And boy, they really made it. They made they really made an impression right out of the gate with Cobra Kai. Because this is a wonderful show, as the world knows now, as the rest of the world mm -hmm. has found out. It comes on, and you think, well, this is this is their start. This is their starting point. I can't imagine what there what's to come in the next few years. And we speculated when we got together for our first Cobra Kai discussion, we were like, Oh yeah, they're going to bring back Alf and they're going to do like a back to the future cartoon. And this is going to be the destination for all eighties revitalization. That's what it should have been. But yeah. at some point they's like, nah, eh, we don't need it. We're, we're good. And they decided they weren't going to do it. And the producers of, of Cobra Kai wanted to go somewhere where they were going to be, on a let's say a winning team like you you worded yeah. worded it the last time, um, so they there was a window of about several weeks where we knew they were moving, but we didn't know where they were moving to. We heard rumors. I know eventually Ralph Macchio said, "Yeah, there were a couple of places in in, in contention." Hulu was being mentioned, uh, even CBS All Access. But they landed at the right place. Netflix is going to get them in front of the most eyeballs. 
Yeah. It did just that. It it's as it the the first two seasons, which had been on, on the shelf for a while, had been out for a while, moved to Netflix, a whole new audience. Yeah. Had found the show. And that's pretty it's it's pretty outstanding. This show's a hit twice because it was already very popular on YouTube, but there were a lot of people, surprisingly, that didn't watch it when it was on YouTube. I mean, well, I'm, I'm not surprised that people didn't pay subscription for YouTube, but there were opportunities to watch it for free. Yep. People could to do the week trial, I think week, week trial, week, mm -hmm. week trial, and then they they released it where you could watch it for free later, like later months later they released it where you could watch it for free at least the first season. So there were opportunities for people to watch it, but it just seemed a little clunky to get on YouTube and kind of figure out how to watch a show on there and expand your window. And it's when not, you think streaming service, you don't think YouTube. No, it was a little weird. People were like, it's on YouTube. Is that legit? Is it sort of like a, a parody? <laughs> is a this pirate a, copy? Yeah. Is this a, is this a parody of uh, karate kid? Is this a real show? So it was, it, it kind of had a cult following, I think very strong cult following on YouTube, but a lot of people didn't get there to see it. Finally, it hits Netflix, and then we see what this show's potential was from the beginning, and this show becomes an even bigger hit on on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm happy for that because there's more people, like you said, rediscovering it, mm -hmm. and then more people wanting to talk about it. And I'm, I'm always down to talk Cobra Kai. Now, so. I want to set this up right now. If anybody that's watching that has not seen already all of season one or season two. Uh, spoiler alert, we may spoil it. We're not going to go out of our way to spoil it, but we may we probably will go out of our way to spoil it. So just I'll go out of my way to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, just a heads up if you haven't seen it, just a spoiler alert right now. And um, we'll, we'll uh, kind of put that warning out there. And then also comments. Uh, we're going to hit, I'm going to hit those uh, towards the end of the show. We're going to talk to some of the people on here that have, Already, we got one Facebook user said Cobra Kai. Right, that's right. With the fist, love it. So, here's the thing: we we were early adapters. We watched the the shows when they dropped on YouTube. We went through the trouble of watching it on YouTube and expanding the window and, and figuring it out, trying to figure out how to watch a show on YouTube. So, we were early adapters. There were many of us that were early adapters. We did, I mean, three three podcasts, I think, on, on the topic of season one and season two of of Cobra Kai, like going back a few years back. So we were early adapters, but my question for you, us as early adapters, are we pissed that because of the move to Netflix and because of the, the, that causing a delay in, in the release of season three and that they're, cause they're giving time for people to get caught up on first and second season. Are we pissed that the rest of the world is just now discovering this show and we're having to wait for them to get caught up so we can finally get our season three extremely extremely pissed also come on netflix you know when people binge it they tell everyone else they binge it and now we're ready it doesn't take that long I we, know. we're still in a damn panic like you said and the thing is people have nothing better to do than to binge watch stuff that's what everyone's doing right now so they binge watched it now bring out season three dadgummit it's, it's out it's already in the can it's already been finished I personally um, would have dropped it either Thanksgiving or Christmas. They're going, they're going with January. Yeah. At least end of the year. I agree with you. Yeah. They're going with January, but I would have thought it would have been a great holiday release because people are, are at home and. Oh yeah. I mean, we're at home anyway, but I mean, they're at home, especially during the holidays. <laughs> well, so. they're off during the holidays. A lot of people take off during the holidays and why not go ahead and binge watch the newest season and you get tons of viewers. See, that's something that's called common sense, Stephen, that you have and. I don't think Netflix has right now. I don't know what the deal is because this is an era where we need new content. New content didn't come out soon, but they have season three in the back. Come on, run with it. People are going. People are starting to film stuff. Filming is, you know, starting back up again. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, competition will be thick again. And remember, in a, in 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 the entertainment world, once this pandemic's over. People are going to fight to get our attention again. Our attention is going to be different this way, this way. That's why I'm surprised some of these direct-to-DVD movies that have been coming out recently mm -hmm. aren't getting a theatrical release. It's not like they have any competition. And even if you only make you know $1 million, that's probably most of your budget there. Mm -hmm. And people, there are people who have movie theaters open right now. And you know who knows? They may want to see something like that, something different that they usually wouldn't see. 
Have you been back to the theater uh, for anything uh, since the initial shutdown back in March? Have you ventured yeah. out? Yes, uh, I venture out and I watch because what what they're doing right now, since nothing new's coming out, they're bringing out the old stuff. So um, I am watching. I took my wife to see Dirty Dancing for our anniversary because oh, they did a re-release of that. Okay, they did a re-release of that. Of course, I saw Empire Strikes Back. When By the way, out. Dirty Dancing getting a sequel. No. Yes. Did you not know this? No. Well, they did Havana Nights. No, no, not that. Not that. Not <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is it going to start? Is it going to start Jennifer? Because Patrick Swayze is gone. Yeah, that would. I I joked when it was announced, and it has been announced. It's been officially announced. I joked that it was going to be a ghost, dirty dancing, uh, crossover, <laughs> a movie event. No one puts Patrick Swayze in a grave. Oh. <laughs> where's that the line there where's that uh we got a a, a sound effect for that and i've got to find it <laughs> go ahead i'm still but getting that, used to where all my sound effects are oh, well, he's, well he's trying to find the sound effect um i plan on watching the shining this weekend if mm -hmm. i can any any way i can watch the shining i got to see the shining teenage mutant ninja turtles the uh first one you get an applause because i couldn't find the rim shot there you go thank you <laughs> Yes, I said it. Um, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I got to see. Um, I'm having a blast right now to be. I miss Jurassic Park in theaters. Shame on me. We just didn't get around to seeing it. Went, on, mm -hmm. went out. I'm hoping it'll come back in. But I am all about these old movies. Some of them, most of them I got to see in theaters. Some of them I never did mm -hmm. back in the day. So getting this second shot to see them in theaters is going to be fun. I've never seen The Shining in the theaters. I'd love to see that. There's a handful of movies I'd like for them to bring back that I would love to see in theaters. And they're doing that right now. I think that's a smart thing. But yeah, I mean, that's, are, that's what they're doing in the theater. A lot of the theaters that are open because there are very few new releases. And now we're not talking about theaters yet, are we? Well, we'll get, we'll jump into that. I got, you got it. Much in agree or disagree about that. You and got it. Have some takes on that. But yeah, you've been yeah. super not to say, yeah, so they are doing Jennifer Gray. Is coming back to Can reprise her role, that. and apparently this time it's going to be her with her kids or one of her kids, maybe a daughter she has. Go into a camp, something like that. A dance yeah. camp. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So that's the kind of the thing. It's going to be kind of a handoff the next generation, Dirty Dancing. So there'll be sort of a, I'm sure, a repeat of some of the stuff we saw in the original movie, but this time with a new generation and Jennifer Grey being the kind of older mentor if jennifer gray is there my wife is in yeah pretty sure yeah so we'll see how that turns out i mean it depends on the people that are attached to it and and uh if they can people like you said are definitely fans of that are going to come out and see it oh oh it, yeah for real they are yeah mm -hmm. they'll be interested in it music's very important too though because you know the original movie anybody that saw the uh, the movies that made us on netflix mm -hmm. the, the dirty dancing version of that that show knows how important that music was for that movie i mean that is what that was about 50 percent of that or if not better of that movie yeah. so for me they get the music right then that movie's got a chance of having some level of success so putting they, jennifer like, gray in it is a good reason you need that for the nostalgia factor yeah it connects it more to that you gotta have some connection to it and then you bring in a hologram of, of patrick swayze as a ghost and you've got again you've got the best crossover in the history of movie crossovers. crossovers i need my halloween sound effect for that one that would 80s be a, verse rest in peace by the way to, to patrick swayze the great patrick swayze but um yeah that would get oh that would get this patrick magical magical you're back i, I gotta make a vase now yes gotta do the vase see for me if that happened to me and I came back as a ghost for my wife. I wouldn't want to make a vase. I'd like want to come back and like do a top, make a taco up with her and open a Topo Chico, Topo Chico and be kind of a romantic moment. We squeeze a lime together on over the taco. <laughs> that would, for me would be my, my version of that. We would enjoy the taco. To, maybe we would share the taco together where they would play the righteous brothers music over that, that, <laughs> that scene. <laughs> That's you haven't given this much thought. No, 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 no. I've never <laughs> thought about, I may have to film that now. <laughs> I, I that, that's that fantasy scene. That's awesome. That's uh, that's my version. <laughs> so anyway, what, 
uh, we'll we'll come we're gonna come back before january and do our like a real like pre-show to the release of the new season i hope you'd come back and do that with me i'd love to love to so we'll, we'll get more in deep in the details but tell me a couple of things that, that stand out to you that you expect and hope to see in season three Okay, one of the things that, and I've said this before on, on your podcast, is that I'm really impressed with Cobra Kai is they do not ignore the sequels, mm -hmm. which these days we only want to pay attention to the yeah. first movie that was a popular one, and then we want to forget the sequels and do like a reboot or side boot or side boot, whatever it's called now. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they keep they keep telling you that Karate Kid 3 happened, which is the cheesiest, that's the cheesiest movie of, of them all. I love it because it's cheesy. But honestly, it is so far unbelievable. It really gets campy, but it's great. In my opinion, I just really love it for its campiness. And that they continue to say, no, Karate Kid 3 was, is part of this universe, and they keep referring to it. I want to see Terry Silver back, and I think we will. You know, I've been hearing whispers of it that it could happen. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see that, and bravo to them. I mean, there's been lots of rumors about uh, – who was the kid, uh, the the bad boy that he fought in the end of three? Yeah, like that actor. They would get back, and he's, um, he's definitely coming back because he's been all over the YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. How he wants to come back, or he, you know. Oh, and and they'll take him because yeah. they'll take those back. Now the thing is, they're gonna they're gonna bring back to the some of the characters from two again. He's probably gonna go back to Okinawa, and they're gonna do. You know, I've heard that rumor before. Okinawa is definitely happening, from what yeah. I understand. And the thing is, they're obviously going to bring two in there again. So I'm excited for that. And I love and I applaud that they are upholding the sequels. Now, the only thing I'm kind of I'm kind of hoping against it because I don't own the movie. I refuse to own the movie. But mm -hmm. supposedly they made another movie after Karate Kid 3. Yes. Not the one with Jackie Chan. And um, yeah. that actress is not doing anything right now. And I Hillary really Swank. Mm, I know I didn't want to mention your name. The thing is they could conceivably get her back for this. Well, you know what? I and mean, this show is really hot right now. So they could yeah. get a lot of people back for this. I mean, they could get, they could have John Travolta on there playing a, owning a dojo. True. But <laughs> I mean, get someone like Hillary Swank to reprise her role. Not far fetched. And if so, I have to go buy the next karate kid. Oh, I said it. It's like Beetlejuice. Um, and I didn't dislike. I didn't dislike the next Karate Kid. I, I didn't, despised it. I didn't love it as much as the original. I know you despised it, and you will not play it. It's your Karate Kid watch party marathon. No, I don't even own it. It doesn't get. I, I, I in. purposely chose the box set without it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I did. I did not want that movie, and I was so excited when it came out. By the way, on on maybe it got a movie release too, but I remember get renting it and going, yes, more karate kid. I knew Danielle wasn't in it, but I was like, I'm up for this. And then it's just so bad. It's mm -hmm. so bad. But anyway, if they put it into Cobra Kai, it's a done deal. Laura from uh, Periscope Twitter saying hello to us. Laura Drahan. If I'm saying that name correct. And thank you for, for, for your hello, for your greeting. Uh, makes us feel there's, there's people out there that are, they care about us. They love Aww. us. They they like us. Aww. They love us, but they like us. Um, <laughs> thank you, Laura, for coming in and checking on us. Um, this, yeah, and I think this show now, it's going to Netflix. It's a hit for the second time. And third season is just going to go through the roof when it comes out in January. Right. It'll leap to the top of Netflix's top 10, and it'll probably hold the number one spot for a while in January because you're not going to be what's going on in January. What else is going on in January? So it'll come out, be huge again. We'll all be like, oh, my God, I can't believe season three was that amazing. And after the first two seasons being as amazing as they were, I expect season three is going to be just blow our minds. And we'll still we'll be thinking about it in May. After it came out in January, we'll still yeah. be – digesting it in, in May. So that will happen. But this show could very easily get maybe more. Cause I originally predicted this was a four, five season show. Now I'm thinking that Netflix might try to milk this, this series. They might try to do a six or seven seasons out of this. I have a feeling they'll try, but I think the writers are pretty dead set. I think cause according to, um, Martin, um, who's the, um, Martin, uh, Cove. That, Martin Cove that they've had, they have the story set out and they yeah, told I've him from that. start I've to finish what that. was going on. So 
I feel like they're not going to let it run, you know, what, jump the shark, you know, as they say. I think they're going to keep it. But at the same time, I would hold on to those writers and say, what other 80s movie would you like to continue? Or what would you... I would keep those guys around because they they know how to pay homage to these... Eight, this is the first time in the history, and I've, I think I said this on the last time we did the podcast, first time in history that I've liked a TV show better than the original movie. Are you kidding me? Yeah. The original movies are... Cla- I mean, The Karate Kid is a classic. I never get tired of watching it. I never will get tired of watching it, but Cobra Kai is a great story. It's a better story than the movies. I said, how do you have a spinoff TV show? This, there's no, it, it, when this thing came out, and I think we discussed this, I want to say, before it came out, we were expecting, you know, some throwbacks, some fun stuff, some jokes. We, I don't know about you, I never expected it to be this good. Yeah. No, and my didn't. wildest, I thought they were going to mention the movies, have a little joke here and there about Karate Kid, and maybe he'd crane kick him at the end. We'd all laugh and say, that was fun. We'd never seen this level of dedication to good storytelling from a, from a spinoff TV show before, ever. You're talking about other what other great 80s shows or 90s shows, for that matter, could be revitalized and by creators like this that do such a good job with that type of content. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the next great 80s revitalization could be an animated animated series based on a live action from the 80s. Like, how cool would it be if they took, like, say, here's an example. This is a wild and crazy idea that I had a while back. If they took the A-Team, the TV series, the A-Team, which they did do a a movie remake at one point that with Bradley Cooper was in it. um, And I I don't know who else was in that movie. So they did it. Didn't do very well. I mean, you can't do A-Team without Mr. T, without the original Mr. T. You just can't do it. So Dirk Benedict also in that cast. So you've got... The A team. What if you did the A team, an animated version of the A team, where the idea, and then you could also do this with something like, say, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which, by the way, is getting a remake and doing a dramatic version of it. They're doing a dramatic version, which Will Smith is going to be executive producing. It's based on a short that was shot uh, and released on the internet, and Will Smith loved it. It went viral, and it's a dramatic version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Well, you could do this this animated idea with the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You could do it with the A Team, but take the characters from one of these shows and put them in a time travel multiverse scenario. Like, say, if the, what if the A Team ended up getting abducted by aliens, like after the show went off TV, and they ended up kind of in their own Guardians of the Galaxy kind of adventures that we never saw, the audience never saw, because it happened after the show ended. So that's where they're at now. They never like left this galaxy. They've been in space. They've been in the middle of. So it's basically the A team doing Guardians of the Galaxy. This is my pitch: the A team doing Guardians of the Galaxy. You still have the van, only this time the van is a spaceship. So you got the black with the red stripe across it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It'd be an awesome spaceship. It wouldn't matter that you wouldn't have the original actors back because they would still look. They would you would animate them to look just like Mr. T and look like the gotcha. space man. This could be the next big '80s idea because you don't, have, you wouldn't have to. You could go back to that point in time, but you could put a little spin on it. All right, here's what I would do. I would ask them, "Did you like the movie The Last Starfighter?" Because yeah. we could do a TV show set in that world. I would love that. Where where we find out that he has a son who lives on Earth because. Mm-hmm. He's being, his family is going to get attacked by the enemy because he's the leader of the, you know, the freedom fighters, whoever they are. And so he, he, he lets his son be born and raised on earth, far away from the battle to protect him. However, the aliens find out that's where he is. And so the kid who doesn't know his origins finds out he's being attacked by aliens. And then suddenly his dad, who he was told by his mom disappeared a long time ago, but his mom knows the truth. He comes down at a rocket, you know, from outer space, Mm -hmm. just like he was surprised when he won the video game. Maybe this kid is good at the, maybe this kid automatically Mm -hmm. passes the test on an online game because they tried it again. He's like, no, not my son. Do not bring my son into this. But his son actually won and realizes who his dad really is, is the hero of this alliance. I could see that happening. And I'd love to see these guys take that movie and turn it into a fantastic sci-fi series. 
I think it's got legs. I, I like your idea. I think it's got legs. And, and in, in a time of the streaming wars, where you got Peacock, Hulu, Netflix, yeah. Amazon Prime, uh, and CBS All Access, soon to be Paramount Plus, with mm-hmm. being rebranded. Uh, I know I'm leaving somebody out there. There's, at there's least, a million of them now. Yeah, there's a million of them and more probably to come because there's also, I think, who else is working on one now? Um, there's Disney, of course, Disney Plus. Uh, Disney, Disney, Apple had one if they still Apple, do. Still got it. Apple yeah. Plus. Or I think it's called Apple Plus. Everybody, Whatever it is, yeah. In the world of streaming wars, everything could potentially get rebooted, sequeled, prequeled, and director's cuts. If they're in the vault, we're going to find them and we're going to make them. And uh, there's a possible. I've actually got a song for that. What's gonna get a sequel next? What's gonna get a prequel next? And what's gonna get a reboot next? Sequel, prequel, reboot time. A reboot time. There it is. All right. A song so, for everything. Yeah, well, I try. Yeah, I try to keep a good, some good tunes around. Okay. In this 129th episode of the Thunder Pop podcast, also Thunder Pop Live tonight, I bring you, Matt Wilkins, agree or disagree. Yes, indeed. Okay, so Matt Reeves, the Batman with Robert Pattinson's been, they of course, they had delay, so it seemed like it's been in production forever because it was on, in production, then they had to shut down for the obvious reasons. Then Robert Pattinson tested positive for COVID, so they had yet another partial shutdown, and then I think they resumed without him where they were just filming around his scenes. And and actually, most of the photos I've seen online with the new Batman costume has been the stunt man, the stunt double in the mm-hmm. costume, more than Robert Pattinson, which also kind of raises some intrigue for me because there's rumors the last few days, and I don't like to be the gossips, but the gossips have been that there's been some issues with Robert Pattinson on the set. And so it makes me wonder, are they using stunt doubles a lot more than they would normally use in a movie just to try to give him a break from the director? I don't know. That's a worst case scenario. And I don't want to go too far into that. But here again, here's a picture of the stunt man. So in this film, it was announced that this Batman is going to be the first Batman in live action that's going to be armed with a gun. And you can see it here in his, his, yeah. leg, his leg holster. Here's actually a close up. Um, we're going to see the Batman with a gun in this, in this version of, so apparently the earliest comic books of the Batman, he had a gun in the early, early days of the Batman. Now they took the gun away as after, because of censorship, because there were some concerns that it was too violent, right? Superheroes with guns. So a new code, a code was, a yeah, code the comic was, code. Yeah, comic code was introduced at some point early on in the days of Batman, and so early on the gun was taken away from Batman, and they rebranded the character to be a character that didn't like guns, and they used his origin, of course the story of his parents being killed, as the reason why he didn't like guns and reason why he didn't usually use guns. And it wasn't until the most recent, uh, the Batfleck, in the, that version of the Batman, where I started to see some kind of whispers of that more like vigilante, violent batman that would kind of had had, had, there was kind of a military type scene in that movie where he's in kind of almost camouflage so there they're bringing this it's kind of so it's not totally out of the old batman storybooks but it's something that a lot of people don't have never seen before do you agree or disagree that this is going to be very controversial and they may end may end up backtracking on it and taking it out before it makes it to the big screen well, it looks from that picture, they're going to go ahead and move forward because they want to see a different version of Batman. I don't think it'll be that popular. For the record, I don't hate Robert Pattinson as, you know, Batman because when has anyone ever liked a choice for Batman? Never. Um, and to be honest, probably the most famous choice that people already pre-approved was the one I liked the least, which was Kristen Bale. Um, I thought Ben Affleck did a great job. Yeah, it, 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 he, he just worked for me. And, of course, I was too young to understand why people hated Michael Keaton. I get it now, but he did a great job. But I understand what the hate would have been like before. So, again, I don't, you know, I well, can't believe they get the vampire from Twilight. Okay, well, he's past that now. He was That was years ago. 
at the same time, I'm interested to see what he can do. What, does that mean he'll do a great job? No, he could do a crappy job. Batman with the gun, mm, not a big fan of myself. However, it's something different. I know they're going for something different. Yeah. I don't know if Batman fans are, I don't think Batman fans are going to feel right about this, but I think they're going to go ahead and go through it just to be something different. Yeah. Yeah. Or and maybe, it, maybe he gets rid of the gun during this. This is the reason he doesn't use guns. Maybe that, that maybe we're getting punked by the whole gun thing. That's true because this is supposed to be, you know, the year based on the year one, um, comics of batman so this is the, the youngest version of batman that we're right. seeing this one so it could be something there too that'd be interesting uh number two and do uh, agree or disagree amc reports have come out that amc has said they will have they will be out they will be cash poor out of money by the end of the year we've already known about the woes of the movie industry uh for the obvious reasons do you okay, so here's my thought there was a rumor that I don't know if it was officially a story, actually could have been an official story, that Amazon was in talks to buy AMC. Conglomerate, wow. like, and so, but apparently the deal fell through. So I started going really wild and crazy with the ideas about conglomerates buying up movie theater chains. And my thought is, is would a big conglomerate like it who, who could afford to buy amc first of all and who would be interested in amc so you follow the money to me it'd be amazon netflix that would get, have something to gain from owning a movie theater chain and disney would be three conglomerates that would have something to gain from having their own you know ownership and control of a large movie theater chain but if i was i would think if i'm one of these conglomerates would you wait until the very last minute to come in and try to swoop in and buy one of these theater chains so you could buy low. I mean, would you even wait till it's probably all but shut down and it's on the auctions and you can get it really cheap? I don't think they would buy now. I think they would wait and let them suffer some more. Do you agree or disagree with that? I agree 100%. And I think out of those three choices, Amazon is the clear winner. Um, if you believe some of the financial struggles they've had, Netflix at the time has been they have been borrowing, taking, uh, taking more money than they've been bringing in, uh, trying to get original programming, trying to ramp up because they were the they were the only game in town in the streaming service for years. Now it's an all out market, so they're ramping up and they're spending way too much money. Do they take the jump for theater? Something they've spurned and they've happily spurned for years mm -hmm. is a the theater. Then you have Disney, who would love to control the movie theater industry. I mean, they practically do what with like, don't they own like 65% of movies that come out anyway? I mean, it seems well, like it's yeah, big, it, it was right. some big number, 60% or something, which is huge mm -hmm. when you think about it. So yeah, they would love to do it. But right now Disney is spiraling. They've had, it hasn't been Disney's year. Let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. And so Disney's, I mean, laying off 28,000 people at Disney world, the happy, the happiest place on earth has tears coming right. this month. Yeah. So, and this is right before the holidays too. So that means they're not yeah. getting bookings. Yeah. So things are looking, and, and then all the money, remember folks, they spent tens of millions of dollars that they have not recouped this year because the movies didn't come out. So they're really hurting right now. Is it worth taking a risk buying the movie theater industry, which I, I, eventually something's going to happen. But right now it's a question mark. What happens to movie theaters, period? I think Amazon is the only one that takes the dive on that if it happens. And I think they would because the reason being they bought the Washington Post when newspapers are really going the way. I, yeah, I love old school newspapers. My grandfather worked on a newspaper back in its heyday. I'm glad he passed away. He passed away in the early 2000s, right when newspapers were losing their footing and the Internet was gaining. So he never got to see newspapers fall. It would have broken his heart. Uh, but so I have a, I have a passion for newspapers, but when a they bought a failing newspaper, I mean, sure it's the Washington post, but newspapers aren't come on, but they did that. So that tells me they're not afraid to take the risk because they want to have it. I think they, I think they take that movie theater. That's a great observation, Stephen. So we'll see. Time will tell. Time will answer all questions, including that one. Um, number three, do you agree? Okay. So there's a, a confirmed plan to do a remake of one, I think of one of the greatest comedy films of all time. And this movie was my late grandfather's favorite film. He loved this movie. And so he 
Huge fan of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. They want to re- they're going to do a remake of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with uh, Kevin Hart and Will Smith. Now, now, Kevin Hart said him and Will Smith have wanted to work together for quite some time. They've been trying to find the right project, and they just wanted to find something that, that fit the two, their, the two of them the best together. And so they landed on the, the idea of doing a Planes, Trains, and Automobiles remake. Do you agree or disagree that they should not make this movie. They should not do this remake and that these are two great actors, very funny guys. They should just do something else or make an original thing for them. They should definitely make an original thing. The reason being is, <clears throat> and this is a movie I'm going to watch this Thanksgiving. I've, that's already on the plate to watch. Yeah. I have it on DVD. <clears throat> I, I usually watch my holiday films every other year, some, most of them. And so now it's time to watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I absolutely love this movie. I think it is possibly John Candy's best movie, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And John Candy made a lot of great movies, but this is the one where he just shone for me. I think it was the one where you see the most act, his most the most depth in his. Yeah. It's not just one dimensional. It's it's not just him doing his John Candy type of john candy thing it's got depth because there's there's drama in this movie there's sadness in this movie there's also a lot of humor in this movie and a lot of great comedy and so we see the the dramatic what what john candy's career could have been had not had he not been taken away from us so so early we could have maybe seen him cross over and do some dramatic roles he really it was a comedy but he yeah he plays a different character Mm-hmm. And he's got so many, this character has so many levels. I do not want to spoil this for anyone. If you haven't seen it, please go out and watch this movie. Mm-hmm. There is a scene where he's in the, I think he's in the car and it's snowing outside and he's talking to himself. It That scene, you watch that scene the first time. And then after the movie ends, you rewind it or go back to that spot and watch that scene again. You'll see it as a totally different, in a totally different light. So that's a scene that plays two ways before you've seen the movie. And after you've seen the movie, it has two different meanings. You're like, Oh my, and it's great. Both times. Mm-hmm. It's a great scene, but that there's a lot of great comedy. Steve Martin is playing Steve Martin and, and no one does that better than Steve Martin, by the way, Steve Martin was a perfect, perfect balance for John Candy. John Candy is an overly obnoxious character. You probably have known this character before. <laughs> there are people like that. And he just embodied all of those annoying traits that you have when you go traveling or when you're with someone annoying. It is a phenomenal Thanksgiving and one of the few, if only big one, Thanksgiving themed movies out there. And it is unbelievably good. No, Kevin Hart, Will Smith, great actors. They can do their own thing and it'll be great. And I can't wait to see it. But uh, don't touch a classic like that. Well, you could even do a road trip movie with those two guys. You right. Make a road trip movie because there's been many road trip movies over the years. Some even inspired, I'm, I'm sure, by planes, trains, and automobiles. But then, you know, I think it's better to just do a, an original like road trip movie with new characters and a new universe because you creatively you have the net to throw out further on what you can do with your own version of it. Rather than doing a remake where there's kind of the, the characters and the, the what they do in the film is there, the story is already there. So what you can do around that might be put under a microscope more. Where if you just do something from scratch, you know, boom. exactly. I agree. Well, I've I've also heard people say that there's a thing with uh, writers, and you save money by not having to pay for new script, and that sometimes is appealing to Hollywood. I guess, but when you have talent like that that wants to work together, if you bring an original script together, that's going to fly. You don't always have to. This is one of the examples where nostalgia isn't needed when you have great actors and well-known. I mean, come on. You got two of the biggest blockbuster actors together. You don't need to feed them some remake. Yeah. You have to put them in a remake. Put them in an original. They'll they'll hold up. You know, if you, anything, know. you could put a nod to Planes, Trains, and Automobile in that movie doesn't have to be a remake, but he can definitely do a nod to it that here we are in another road trip movie, but maybe they end up in a movie theater and it's playing, you know, at, during Thanksgiving, there's like that movie there that, you know, or bring Steve Martin, put it, make it a three, make it a three part, three man comedy, bring Steve Martin in it. I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to do it that way, but you can, you can do your own original thing with yeah. those two guys. It, it would be great. It would be great. I think we'd have a better chance of succeeding too. Cause I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, no, no thanks on this. 
you got people like me who are going to p- compare the old to the new, and that's unfair. Yeah, it's unfair, but we can't help do that when you say remake. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. All right, so closing out, we got thoughts and advice, and in this thoughts and advice, we talked about sequels, prequels, reboots. They're all going to be done at one point in time for everything. Another thing that's going to be done by everybody at some point in time, it seems like, is everybody doing a podcast. I had this conversation with last night's guest, Jody Kay, and she was talking about, you know, there's a lot of people that have podcasts now. My microphone broke during the pandemic. I went to Best Buy to try to buy a, another microphone. They were out of microphones because everybody's got a podcast or a live stream now. And it's true. A lot of people do. Um, I have a lot of friends that have podcasts. I, there could come a time because it's, it's accessible. It's accessible now. And we all have things. We, a lot of people have things they want to say. They have a voice. And it's a, there's the opportunity now. It's a revolution that people can have their own voice and their own way to express themselves via a YouTube channel or a podcast. So I do think a time's going to come where we'll go to our family reunions or our class reunions and you're going to be there talking to people and be like, oh, what did you say on your podcast last night? So let me tell you, come over. And then everybody's going to crowd around and like, oh, well, how about you? What are you doing? And it's like, well, my podcast, we talk about this. I think that time is almost basically here. It's like Facebook. Everyone's going to have one. And that's, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's one of the, actually one of the things people warned me about when I was talking about doing a podcast um, over six years ago. They were like, you know, oh, it's saturated. A lot of people do podcasts. And I'm like, yeah, but those are a lot of people, but that's not me. I haven't done one and yeah. I really want to do one. So I'm going to do it. And I also, I, I do think a lot of people do them and they don't stick with it. And that's great. I think that's great too, because you had something you wanted to say. You got it off your chest. You had, you expressed yourself. You had the experience. You did it. And then you were like, nah, I'm good. I'm ready to move on to whatever, like, like my next thing is going to be, you know, Pilates or like taking a <laughs> judo class. I don't know, whatever. Um, Etsy store, sewing, yeah, making go. <laughs> custom buttons or socks, whatever that is. Um, I think it's great. I think it's great. So if you've got, you know, I have people now I'm kind of honored because I don't consider myself by any stretch of the imagination to be an authority or an expert on anything at all. But I get, because we do have a a nice following on Instagram. I get people that email me and ask me like, how do you get so many followers on Instagram? I want to, I want to do a blog or I want to do a YouTube channel about gaming and, and how do I do that? And, you know, I think that, that's great. And I think you should do it. If you want to do it, I think you should go after it and do it, but do it because it's fun. Not because you're trying to get famous or you, you're doing it to try to prove something to someone do it because it's fun. Cause this is a blast for me. Every time I do it, it's a blast, especially when I do it with people like you, Matt Wilkinson. Hey. And this is fun for me. Yeah. And, and that's great advice. Do it because it's fun. Don't do it to be fat. I get the same type of people ask me, how'd you get so many YouTube? I want to get big YouTube. Yeah. You want to get them big on YouTube because you want to make a living off YouTube. Very few people get to do that. And the people who are, are very blessed. They're very fortunate, but you get on there. You talk about like, I, I love star Wars books. I love board games. Guess what my channel is about those two things. I never get bored. I'm, and am I doing it to get famous? No, no, absolutely not. I am so happy for all the uh, subscribers I have. Super happy, super happy. But the thing is, though, ultimately, I'd still be doing this if I only had a hundred. You know, because I just it, it's just videos that I want to say. So have fun with it. Be yourself. Don't try to pretend to be someone else. Mm-hmm. We're influenced by other people, and that's great. That's great. That's where you get your inspiration. But be yourself. Be your own person. Go for it. And if if it's only you watching and a few other few your friends and family. So be it. So be it. Have yeah. fun doing it. That's great advice, Stephen. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I hope to archive these. My son could go back and find some, hopefully not all of them, because there's some things I probably wouldn't want him to find on some, some of our episodes. But I might be gone by then, so I won't have to <laughs> deal with the repercussions, I guess. I guess. But some of the stuff, this one would be a good one for him to find later. There you go. Come along there to you it. go. Um, Okay, so we got. I want to before we close out. I want to. We had, of course, Facebook user said Cobra Kai with the fist. Thank you. Uh, Small time uh, said Bugs Bunny wore a dress back in the day. He was already ahead of the game. 
They're not editing that out on HBO Max, let me tell you. So you got to go. Jacob Ayers uh, said, if WB wants to get kids my age to get HBO Max, they need to give us season six of Teen Titans and the sequel that Mr. Warburton had for CND. Cartoon News, Cartoon at work, or is that that? I don't, I don't know the last one there, but uh, uh, the first one there, a lot of Teen Titans fans. Yeah, right? I've been talking about why, why are we not getting Teen Titans for a while? Like we needed, we need that, we need that back. Um, Especially when DC had its own streaming, you, that was it. Should have been a no brainer. Yeah, it seemed like that would have been done already. Maybe we'll get a CGI Adam West Batman. Ooh. That's interesting. Also from small time. I like your avatar there, by the way. Uh, you're you're from the droids, I believe. Droids cartoon. Yeah. Droids cartoon. Yeah, from the from the eighties, which was great. I love the droids cartoon. Um, Iron Man two could have been better. I'll agree with that. Iron Man one was definitely superior to Iron Man two and three, but I don't think Iron Man two and th because of Robert Downey Jr., yeah. I never got bad Iron Man, in my Maybe. opinion. And I'll be honest, a lot of people hate Thor 2, The Dark World, but I actually enjoyed that one. I thought it had some funny parts. Yeah, like when I thought it did too. His girlfriend's apartment, and he throws his hammer up on the coat hanger <laughs> and just walking in like no big deal. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's great. It's great. Uh, we had Laura in earlier. She said hello on Twitter. And small time, thank you so much for participating. And in, in, uh, you're they were on YouTube tonight. Jennifer Gray's kids go to Camp Crystal Lake and hilarity ensues. I agree. There but you hopefully, go. Hopefully good music and good dancing because that's what 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 big part of what made the original Dirty Dancing. That's right. So you need to have some good music in there. And and uh, the one of the guys from Righteous Brothers, the lead singer is still alive. He sings with a different guy now because the guy he, he the guy that was in the original version of Righteous Brothers passed away a number of years ago. But he's still around, so you could still get him back to to sing something for that movie but okay. um it would be set this you know what's interesting this dirty dancing would be set it couldn't be set in the 60s obviously because it's jennifer gray now with her own kids if they go in real time that movie is going to be how many years 90s? later would it be 30 years later 90s hold on hold on Come on, uh yeah 30 35 years later so they would be hitting in uh 2000 I would it be early 2000s by that point? It'd be, it'd be late 90s or early 2000s. That's interesting to think about, but they would have to do it that way. I mean, she would be almost a grandmother at that point. Would she not be? Or no? No, she could be a, a parent. She could be an older mom. You know, yeah, she could have older kids that are getting into college or high school or yeah. seniors in high school. So, yeah. She could, except very logically. So, they could be in the two thousand, like early 2000s, I think. It could be late nineties. It would be a lot more interesting if they had that movie was set in the eighties or nineties, just for the backdrop. Oh, yeah. The backdrop that that would bring. She looks a little younger. Who knows? Who's to say? Who's to say they don't do that? It'd well, be she, interesting. I don't. I never thought about that. Well, especially if she had kids with, with uh, Patrick Swayze's character. If she had her kids with, which you assume that was going to be the case. Oh, I never thought about that. That's what's going to happen. So those are their those are their kids, and I'm sure he's written out as he passed away in the in this yep. Dirty Dancing universe as well. And that could be kind of a a good. That could actually be a good plot, like push the plot along. Maybe this is why they take this trip together. Exactly. Just to kind of get it, they're trying to get their mom out of the funk of losing her husband, so the kids take her. Exactly. It'd be, we could see a different switch. Oh. So that could be kind of fun, interesting way because this is her sort of like, uh, kind of like we're going to try to have some fun and get move on with, we're trying to move ahead with our lives. And this is what happens. She takes them back to the old stomping ground. So uh, that could be fun. Like anyway, it. this was fun. Thank you so much, so much for coming in. Uh, everyone, you can catch your YouTube channel and tell us again where we can find you. You can find me by my name, Matt Wilkins, um, on YouTube. If you're into Star Wars, Star Wars books, comic books, I review those. I do board games too, and mm -hmm. you know, everyone. I have I have two podcasts of my own that now will go on YouTube as well. And one talks about basically nerd news, and the second one is basically a top five, top five this, top five that. You know, yeah. So fun it's stuff. I have two podcasts. Yeah. Everyone has a podcast. Some of us have two. 
it's like Oprah. Oprah would be like, you get a podcast and you get a podcast yeah, and get a podcast. everybody gets a podcast and uh, you're right there to give everybody, <laughs> give, everybody their, give everybody their podcast. That's Oprah icon too. That's awesome. You get, one, you get a podcast, you get one and, and you get a sequel and you get a prequel and you get a reboot and, and, right. and everybody gets one. All right. Thanks Thank so much for having me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, you didn't have me on your show. I, I had you on. The show. I should have on. you on. We need to have you on. I'm not, I wasn't trying to set that up either. I was purposely. No, we will. Do, we will do I'm that. Going. We will do that. Need I would, to have you on. Well, I'd love to do it anytime. I'd love to do it anytime. But you're always a lot of fun to have on. Thank you so much. And we're, we got Cobra Kai coming in January, so we'll be back together to do some more talking on it. Okay, everyone out there, have a good hour, second millisecond. Good night. See ya. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.